Hello there, brave Imperial recruits, and welcome. Welcome to another part from my rather humorous presentation of the Tome of Wisdom known as the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer. The topic we will be covering today is all about Imperial armor and tanks. Mainly how to recognize them, some tank-specific terms, and know what they can do. All this knowledge is, of course, brought to you by none other than Lord General Militant Huxlow. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn how to properly identify Imperial Armor, shall we? Chapter 4 Imperial Guard Armor and Tank Recognition Section 1 General Introduction the Imperial Guard is justly famous and feared for two things, its infantry and its tanks. The Guard's modus operandi is to smash any foe into trembling defeat with superior numbers and superior firepower. Guardsmen will supply the numbers, and the tanks will supply the firepower. In the theaters of war where you will seek glory, you can expect to observe Imperial armor in operation. There is no sight like it. Until you have witnessed a mass tank charge, you cannot understand the Imperial way of war. No enemy can stand before the rolling thunder of a brigade of 60-ton tanks bearing down on them, with the fury of the Emperor blasting from their chimneys and roaring cannon muzzles. Together, infantry and tanks will pulverize any challenger into quivering submission. This section will brief you on the use of tanks and artillery in the Imperial Guard tank recognition, and basic skills in disabling enemy tanks with the heavy weapons available to you. Section 2. Use of Armor in the Imperial Guard The armories of the Forge Worlds across the galaxy produce millions of tanks for the Imperial Guard. Designs are numerous and diverse, and proper fielding on the battleground of these armored behemoths can turn the tide of fortune. Tanks are formidable weapons, and not just as gun mounts. They are capable of instilling great fear and psychological dread into the hearts of the foe. The reputation of centuries of successful tank warfare precedes our proud armored units. Tanks are organized into their own companies, and in large conflicts they will fight in great armored formations. There is no grander demonstration of imperial might than a tank advance pulverizing an opposing army. Alternatively, vehicles from tank and mechanized companies are commonly detailed to fight as additional units supporting guard infantry companies. If you are part of such a supported unit, keep watch for enemy anti-tank squads, and be ready to dispatch them as soon as possible. If you prove yourself in battle, you may be transferred into an armored fist detail. This means your squad will be transported on a chimera allowing for swift movement and a heavier punch on deployment. Armored fist squads can be invaluable in breaking an enemy swiftly, by smashing a hole in his line and allowing slower infantry platoons to consolidate as they move up behind you under the Chimera's covering fire. There is glory to be gained in taking part in such duty. An armored fist's superior speed allows a field commander increased flexibility as battle unfolds. He can move units swiftly to where they are needed, to plug gaps in the line or advance to take benefit from an enemy's broken retreat. Section 3. Fast Attack Units Striking swiftly and brutally can break an enemy just as surely as concentrated artillery fire or use of superior numbers. The Guard has two main vehicle variants for just this tactic. 1. Sentinels Sentinels, or insurgency walkers, are lightly armored mechanized walkers crewed by a single dedicated guardsman. Sentinels usually fulfill a reconnaissance and raiding function. They are very useful in rough terrain where tracked vehicles cannot go as they can provide highly mobile heavy weapon support to infantry platoons and advancing tanks. Sentinels are armed with a multi-laser, but variation does occur. 2. 
Hellhounds Hellhounds are a guardsman ally. It is a specialized variant of the ubiquitous Chimera chassis employing an Inferno cannon, or similar flame-throwing device, and they are designed to flush out enemy infantry hiding in dense terrain. The igniting chemicals it spews work into every nook and cranny of cover, reaching and immolating any living thing it touches. The Hellhound has a vicious reputation, as do their crews, and the sight of these powerful machines incinerating all in their path instills fear in the hearts of the enemy. Section 4. General Introduction to the Art of Tank Recognition This section is to establish an interest and intelligence in the multifarious and diverse armored divisions you will inevitably come into contact with. It is of the utmost importance for Godsmen to be able to distinguish between different types of tank, and especially between friend and foe. Most races use unit identification marks, flags and pennants, but they are of little use except at close range. There are certain characteristics peculiar to vehicles of each race. Knowledge of these is essential, as with it you will recognize targets or friends. It is also imperative to spot weak points in the armor, so you can exploit that to the full. Section 5. Instinctive Identification Identification of different armored units must become instinctive. This chapter and additional training from your regimental tutors will force this prospect on you. The severity of punishment for failure to pass recognition tests and exams with sufficient marks is in proportion to the importance that the guard places on the subject. Failure to recognize an enemy armored unit may allow it to inflict needless casualties. Pouring fire on a friendly tank is similarly damaging and is considered a capital offense. Section 6. Essential Points of Recognition Tanks and armored vehicles are universally used by all advanced races known to humanity. Distinguishing between the brutal, unsophisticated lines of an orc gun truck and the sleek, slender lines of the brittle Eldar tanks is easy to do. But all types of tank exist between these extremes, and here the lines of recognition can blur, especially in the heat, smoke, and chaos of battle. Also, when fighting human renegade filth, tank types can be barely distinguishable at all. This is where the principles of essential points of recognition come into play. Differences are in the details, coloration, markings, camouflage patterns, types of body, type of wheel, position of exhaust flutes, weapons, intricate or ornate decorations, mud guards, etc all of which have influence on the outside appearance. Go with your first instinct, but the first impression must be checked in the light of more detailed knowledge of your local enemy. Check on at least two features of recognition before making the decision to open or hold fire. Turret, armament, track assembly, hull, vox and signal mast. Cross-check what you see with visuals in this section and with the extra information you may have been furnished with, particular to the campaign, and your own local knowledge. Section 7. The Kill Shot and Armor Basis The term Armor Basis denotes the thickness of the armor plate protection of an armored vehicle. It denotes the comparative immunity to fire of different areas of the vehicle. It is generally true that the parts less likely to come under fire are made correspondingly thinner. Decisions in the design have to account for both protection and speed. The heavier the tank, the better protected it is, but this advantage is countered by a loss of speed and slower acceleration. The back and the underside of most tanks will often be less protected than the front and flanks which will be facing the enemy, and thus their fire. A kill shot will more than likely be successful if aimed at these more vulnerable areas. It must also be understood that a projectile striking armor plate loses its penetration power, as the angle of impact increases. Reciting the litany of penetration will go some way to offset this phenomenon. 
if a heavy weapon team has a choice of target, to realize the maximum capabilities of the shot, it is advisable not to fire on a target approaching obliquely, but at an angle which will allow a 90 degree impact. The shallower the angle, the greater the chance of inflicting a glancing blow is. Glancing blows are when the missile or projectile strikes the target only for it to rebound off, causing less damage. The majority of anti-tank weapons are most effective when they penetrate the hull and detonate inside the vehicle. Section 8. Vehicle Recognition – Imperial Patterns Imperial tanks are the finest war vehicles in the galaxy. Their noble lines and powerful build pour fear into the hearts of the foe as their glorious guns can pour forth the Emperor's venomous fury. Learn the shape and form of Imperial armor well, and delight in the pain and slaughter they will bring down on the corrupt and the alien. The Chimera The Chimera armored troop carrier is the main transport and support vehicle of the Imperial Guard. Many regiments make use of them. There are several modified variants of the standard pattern. The Hellhound Flame Tank This is built on a Chimera chassis, the turret is armed with an Inferno Cannon or similar variant, and the pintel mount has been removed. The Griffin Armored Weapons Carrier is built on a Chimera chassis and provides close to medium range mobile artillery support with its heavy mortar armament. The Basilisk Mobile Artillery Platform It is based on the Chimera chassis, making it a highly mobile artillery base. It follows an infantry advance and can deploy and fire in minutes. The Lehman Russ Battle Tank is the most widely deployed tank used by the Imperial Guard. It is rugged and versatile, and many modified types exist. The Lehman Russ Demolisher is a siege tank. It carries the short-ranged but highly destructive Demolisher Cannon, for use mainly against fortifications and buildings. Section 9. Vehicle Recognition – Orc Patterns The fact that the bestial scum orc aliens have technology at all is a phenomenon that defies understanding. Orcs love their vehicles, and although they in no way compare to the noble designs of the Imperial Adeptus Mechanicus, they can be surprisingly effective. Orcs have a great predilection for speed, and often their vehicles are designed to gain maximum velocity at the expense of other design considerations such as stability and structural integrity. Unlike the superior and revered directives of the Adeptus Mechanicus, Orcs can change and mutilate their vehicles beyond all recognition. This makes identifying specific classes difficult. Although actually identifying a vehicle as one belonging to the orcs is very easy. No creatures make their means of transport more ugly, blocky, makeshift and loud as the orcs. Destroy them on sight. Addendum It is a sad and common practice among the foul Xenos to actually capture and mutilate Imperial pattern tanks for their own use. Look out for signs of this monstrous behavior. Orc glyphs and symbols painted on the hull, the mounting of orcoid weapons, crude modifications and changes to the one's holy shape, and the painting of red stripes on the hull in an effort to make the vehicle travel faster. Destroy these mistreated vehicles with a prayer to the tortured machine spirit inside, knowing you are freeing it from its misery at the hands of the Xenos. The Warbike is a very common vehicle. They are swift, travel in packs, and are usually armed with twin autocannons. They are lightly armored, and a well-aimed missile into their midst will be sufficient to shred their fuel tanks and send them all to their doom. Trucks are the orcs equivalent of the righteous Chimera chassis. It provides the basis for most orc vehicles, from artillery platforms to troop carriers. They are speedy, maneuverable, and can be armed with an infinite variety of weaponry. They are often open-topped, which makes the crew vulnerable to small arms fire. If you fight in a campaign against the ubiquitous orcs, no doubt you will find yourself blowing many of these vehicles to scrap. 
The Orc Dreadnought is a bastardized install to the legendary Dreadnought of the Adeptus Astartes. They are piloted by a single Orc, hardwired into a mobile battlesuit. They come armed with any mixture of long and short ranged weaponry. They are slow to move, but effective if allowed into a commanding position. Coordinate heavy weapon teams to annihilate them as soon as possible. The sight of a wrecked dreadnought will put the fear of the God Emperor into their animal hearts. Section 10 Vehicle Recognition Eldar Patterns The base alien Eldar are well known for their use of anti gravitic vehicles. Their unknowable and heretical technology must be destroyed where it is discovered as it is a grave insult to the Divine Machine God that inhabits all the metal hearts of Imperial War Machines. Eldar transports are swift and highly maneuverable, but weak, and their inferior armor is easily penetrated by a well-placed missile or last blast. Fear not the weapons of the enemy, for they are corrupt, and their corruption makes them fragile. Destroy them with your pure shot. The jet bikes are sleek, one-person vehicles capable of flying low at high speeds. This makes them a pleasant challenge to shoot down. They are armed with weapons that fire tiny metal shots. Imperial Guard flak armor will provide ample protection. Beware that a damaged jet bike does not try a suicide run on your position in his cowardly desperation. The Falcon is the standard graph tank of the Eldar. Although faster than the Lehman Russ, it is unreliable, comparatively lightweight and prone to self-destruct, denoting the blasphemous nature of alien technology employed in its construction. Its abominable and offensive shape is easily recognized, as is the sharp hiss and whine sound of its twin-linked projectile weapons. It also has a small troop-carrying capability. The War Walker plays a similar role on the battlefield as the lighter and faster Imperial Sentinel. Do not be disheartened by their size. They are inferior in design and piloted by a weak alien protected by a feeble energy shield. Blast these abominable heresies from the Immortal Emperor's sacred sight. Ignore their attempts to target and shoot you, their puny weapons cannot harm a well-defended position. Take time. Aim true and destroy the Xeno's scum. And that, my friends, is all the primer has to teach you about Imperial Armor for today. I've said this before in the previous primer video, but if you guys have this book or are familiar with this book and would like me to cover any specific section of it next, do feel free to tell me in the comments below. Was this propaganda video informative or entertaining? In that case, your local commissar is very pleased and would also like you to press the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a very peaceful day. The Emperor protects.